My name is Rochelle Jamila Wilvin, and I am a dancer, choreographer, herbalist, and birth worker. My name is Ogem Diuday, and I am a dance artist, educator, and doula. Afro Peach is a series of workshops we are creating together to support Black postpartum people in Brooklyn. So dance is this really critical tool for embodiment and processing both our memories and then creating images of what we would like to see in the future. Our hopes with this project are to hold space for Black postpartum people to feel sacred through their postpartum journey. Malika Nia Imani. Hello, my name is Blaze Sparta. My name is Melania Graham. And, and we, we are a Dream Seed Collective. I've always wanted to see cards with imagery that exemplified us and raised us up rather than have us in the background. We're going to be focusing on creating a tarot deck that features our community members who are Black, people of color, queer people, young people, and elders. We truly believe in co-creating healing in our Black, Indigenous, POC communities. We believe that intergenerational healing is possible through art, through discussion, through community. That was beautiful! Yeah. <laughs>Hi, my name is Gabriel Torres. I am a Colombian theater artist and a storyteller. I am currently living in New York and my practice focuses on community, education, and new ways of telling stories. With the Landuma project, I am working on House of Dust using theater, a game, and a garden to bring awareness about substance use in Latinx queer communities. As someone who struggles with substance use, I know vulnerability, connection, and honesty can help us heal. And storytelling can do exactly that. Create pathways for communication. My name is Rochelle Jamila Wilvin, and I am a dancer, choreographer, herbalist, and birth worker. My name is Ogem Diuday, and I am a dance artist, educator, and doula. Afro Peach is a series of workshops we are creating together to support Black postpartum people in Brooklyn. So dance is this really critical tool for embodiment and processing both our memories and then creating images of what we would like to see in the future. Our hopes with this project are to hold space for Black postpartum people to feel sacred through their postpartum journey. Malika Nia Imani. Hello, my name is Blaze Sparta. My name is Melania Graham. And, and we, we are a Dream Seed Collective. I've always wanted to see cards with imagery that exemplified us and raised us up rather than have us in the background. We're going to be focusing on creating a tarot deck that features our community members who are Black, people of color, queer people, young people, and elders. We truly believe in co-creating healing in our Black, Indigenous, POC communities. We believe that intergenerational healing is possible through art, through discussion, through community. That was beautiful! Yeah. Hi, my name is Gabriel Torres. I am a Colombian theater artist and a storyteller. I am currently living in New York, and my practice focuses on community, education, and new ways of telling stories. With the Landuma project, I am working on House of Dust using theater, a game, and a garden to bring awareness about substance use in Latinx queer communities. As someone who struggles with substance use, I know vulnerability, connection, and honesty can help us heal. And storytelling can do exactly that, create pathways for communication.
My name is Rochelle Jamila Wolven, and I am a dancer, choreographer, herbalist, and birth worker. My name is Ogem Diuday, and I am a dance artist, educator, and doula. Afro Peach is a series of workshops we are creating together to support Black postpartum people in Brooklyn. So dance is this really critical tool for embodiment and processing both our memories and then creating images of what we would like to see in the future. Our hopes with this project are to hold space for Black postpartum people to feel sacred through their postpartum journey. Malika Nia Imani. Hello, my name is Blaze Sparta. My name is Melania Graham. And, and we, we are Dream Seed Collective. I've always wanted to see cards with imagery that exemplified us and raised us up rather than have us in the background. We're going to be focusing on creating a tarot deck that features our community members who are Black, people of color, queer people, young people, and elders. We truly believe in co-creating healing in our Black, Indigenous, POC communities. We believe that intergenerational healing is possible through art, through discussion, through community. That was beautiful! Yeah! <laughs>Hi, my name is Gabriel Torres. I am a Colombian theater artist and a storyteller. I am currently living in New York and my practice focuses on community, education, and new ways of telling stories. With the Landrumar project, I am working on House of Dust using theater, a game, and a garden to bring awareness about substance use in Latinx queer communities. As someone who struggles with substance use, I know vulnerability, connection, and honesty can help us heal. And storytelling can do exactly that. Create pathways for communication. My name is Rochelle Jamila Wolven, and I am a dancer, choreographer, herbalist, and birth worker. My name is Ogem Diuday, and I am a dance artist, educator, and doula. Afro Peach is a series of workshops we are creating together to support Black postpartum people in Brooklyn. So dance is this really critical tool for embodiment and processing both our memories and then creating images of what we would like to see in the future. Our hopes with this project are to hold space for Black postpartum people to feel sacred through their postpartum journey. My name is Rochelle Jamila Wolven, and I am a dancer, choreographer, herbalist, and birth worker. My name is Ogem Diuday, and I am a dance artist, educator, and doula. Afro Peach is a series of workshops we are creating together to support Black postpartum people in Brooklyn. So dance is this really critical tool for embodiment and processing both our memories and then creating images of what we would like to see in the future. Our hopes with this project are to hold space for Black postpartum people to feel sacred through their postpartum journey. Malika Nia Imani. Hello, my name is Blaze Sparta. My name is Melania Graham. And, and we, we are Dream Seed Collective. I've always wanted to see cards with imagery that exemplified us and raised us up rather than have us in the background. We're going to be focusing on creating a tarot deck that features our community members who are Black, people of color, queer people, young people, and elders.
We truly believe in co-creating healing in our Black, Indigenous, POC communities. We believe that intergenerational healing is possible through art, through discussion, through community. That was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs>
in that, that process of irresistibility. So I wanna ask everyone to just take a deep breath in. Let it out. And just repeat after me. I am irresistible. My future is irresistible. My community is irresistible. Our artistic revolution is irresistible. Have an amazing night. Oh, how incredible. Thank you, Adrian Marie, for grounding us and for calling up our ancestors for their continued guidance. Yes, we are indeed irresistible. And now I will turn the program over to our host for the evening, one of our most esteemed and celebrated and wonderful creative intellectuals. That is Naomi Beckwith. She is the longest serving LP board member, uh, going back to my days on the board, as well as deputy director and Jennifer and David Stockman, chief curator at the Guggenheim Museum. Naomi, welcome and thank you. Take it away. Thank you so much, Kemi. Thank you, Adrienne Marie Brown, for those beautiful words of affirmation. And hello, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening as we celebrate our 2021 Create Change Artists in Residence. I am so, so thrilled to be hosting from you all this evening. Uh, sorry, hosting for you all this evening. I am Naomi, no preferred pronouns, and as Kimmy said, a proud and long serving trustee of the LP and so supportive of their mission to bring art and healing, and yes, even the revolution to our communities. I am joining you all tonight from Upper Manhattan, the ancestral homeland of the Lenape peoples, whose elders, past, present, and future, we offer our gratitude and our respect. And I'm so excited to host this program and guide us through the artist presentations in reflection of the three commission projects supported by the LP this year. Each project offers insightful inroads to rethink healing through the collective and creative processes. Pulling up the histories and personal narratives around care and survival that is so deeply rooted across the communities they are part of. The six artists we will meet tonight are early career practitioners who have presented an ambitious body of programming and artwork that are civic, collaborative, and based in dynamic modes of storytelling. So the format for tonight is as follows. There will be three presentations, each about 10 minutes long. Gabriel Torres will kick us off this evening, followed by Ogimdi Ude and Rochelle Jamila Wilburn. And we will end this evening with the Dream Seed Collective. Now, there is no Q&A format tonight, no discussion. So we just ask that you share your comments and reflections in the chat box for the artists to field and reply to afterwards. So first up, I'm excited to begin the evening by introducing Gabriel Torres, who will share more about their project, House of Dust. House of Dust is a multi-pronged project to support and educate queer Latinx communities struggling with substance abuse on the Lower East Side. At the center of what Gabriel presented this summer, was an immersive theatrical experience, which is described as a new coming of age, fantastical mixed media installation. Overall, their project proposes ways, ways recovery can take shape through art. By creating a series of exchanges around theater, games and gardens, Gabriel imagines the creative possibilities of transforming grief and trauma. As a multidisciplinary Colombian artist, Gabriel has directed shows and readings in Hong Kong, Colombia, and right here in New York City. They also work in the fields of education and community organizing, which is reflected in the critical engagement elements of this project. 
Please all join me in welcoming Gabriel. Yeah, my name is Gabriel Torres. My pronouns are they, them. I am presenting from Hudson Yards, which is the unceded land of the Lunapu people. I am a white looking Latinx man and I have a red shirt and on a white background. The presentation that you're about to see, it's a video that will showcase images of the events of the project, um, some information about the game and the games that we're developing, and then it will finalize with an excerpt from our show, House of Us. We can play the video now. So I wanted to start by just talking about the events and, and the engagements that we made with the community this year. Um, and a little with how the project began. The project uh, began, here we go. So the project began as a development residency in Loisaida Inc. that finalized in the creation of, um, I think we need to go back jungle between my school and grandma's house when I was five, the mountain top between my uncle's house and the Peñaveral Mall back in Bucaramanga, bungalow in Laguna Beach, Park Avenue, 59th floor. Uh, okay, so the project began as a development residency in Loisaida, Inc. Uh, the finalizing the muralization of their space. We were planning on doing the, the show there, but we couldn't because of COVID. Throughout the year, thanks to the LP, I was able to participate in panels and discussions, such as the one with the city of New York and the summit by Unity. Then we did some workshops. We did a meditation workshop with the community with FAB NYC. We also hosted a chorus workshop and we finalized with the creation, creation of some shrines within the community. On January 15th, we're going to be hosting a community exhibition showcasing the work that we all did together. Um, besides the work that we did with the community, then there is the show, which was a theatrical experience, but because of COVID, we had to adjust it and turn it into an installation. In the installation, the story follows eight characters, um, souls that are meeting in a place called the Abyssum, where they say their last words before they're able to transcend into heaven. Um, in this space, we invite audiences to take a seat, grab a bean bag, and just look anywhere, connect with the audience themselves if they want to. It's an open space. Uh, now I'm going to show you a little video of the development of the game and talk a little about it. Okay, so I just wanted to walk you a little through the games that we created from the Wheel of Awareness by Dr. Danielle Spiegel from UCLA. The first one is based on focusing on something visual that can help you release anxiety. 
we follow some codes and you're supposed to play them with the faces. The second one is auditive. So we invite people to scream to the storm until it disappears. And then in our last game, it's a little more holistic. Um, it's supposed to help you disengage your negative thoughts from your positive thoughts and understand what are the tools that you can utilize to distract yourself from the negative. So we have three different pods. Um, we invite people to write what they're feeling or what they think they got inside of the pod. And depending on where you put it, you'll see the pods interact with each other. Um, I think this game itself is created because I felt that it's really easy to find the substances with your phone. Um, just to finalize, I am going to show you an excerpt of the show, House of Dust. Places are important to me. The garden in my uncle's house, grandma's room, the jungle between my school and grandma's house when I was five, the mountaintop between my uncle's house and the Cañaveral Mall back in Bucaramanga, bungalow in Laguna Beach, Park Avenue, 59th floor, where I got married the first time, tiny apartment in Prince Edward, Hong Kong, the apartment in Dallas, the student residency in Bogota, the street where, under the rain, I first kissed him, my aunt's apartment, full of crystals and memories, the farm in Belgium, the room at the Standard Hotel where I overdosed, the old woman in the street, the lonely human begging for someone to hear them out, the body of a sex worker colliding on someone's skin. The eyes of a faraway being trying to communicate. The present, the present, the present. Come with me, children. Come and listen while I tell you a story. I come from the mountain top of a far away land where the air is crystal clear and when you inhale you're inhaling more than oxygen you know you're inhaling the land and the water you can close your eyes you can, you know, close your eyes. Close your eyes for me now. You can. Before we begin, I want you to imagine the land Imagine the ocean waves bringing the sand to shore, the dust, the white dust, being forced onto my land. Now it and I are one. Breathe in.
the abysm is officially closed. Welcome to Nirvana, everyone. Here, the day has turned blue in order for the waves to rise above the flesh of man. Here, the moon has colored the grass underneath our skin. Yes. Underneath our skin lies the soil of the planet waiting to vibrate as we vibrate when our humanity is invoked. <sighs> in the dirtiness, in the cold iron, in the concrete, in the bloody tears of our crystal fragility, the God seeds have been discovered and they spread. A God seed is a gift given to humans that beyond the tribulations for eternity they are and will be in the process of transcending where mm. the transcendent of dust isn't that wonderful to know we will always return to where we started. When we accept absurdity, we accept ourselves. God seeds. Funny gifts. They were given to all of us. Poor and rich. Violent or kind, broken or fixed, God seeds. Thank you so much, Gabrielle, for that project and congratulations. It is really, really beautiful. And I know myself and other members of the audience are surely want to keep up with developments of the project and, and want to hear how it, how it moves from phase to phase. But really, I want to thank you also for creating a brilliant virtual project that has so much for us in thinking about physical resilience. Congrats. Our next presentation is a collaboration between Ogimdi Ude and Rochelle Jamila Wilburn. Their project, Afro Peach, is a series of online workshops and other resources for Black postpartum people, which uniquely blend movement, healing practices, and birth work to provide holistic care. Offerings focus on healing from the physical, mental, and emotional effects of pregnancy and birth, creatively processing birth stories, and building somatic relationships between new parents and caretakers and their babies. There are many through lines between their creative practices. Both Ogimdi and Rochelle are doulas with movement-based practices. Ogimdi is a Nigerian-American dance artist, educator, and doula based in Brooklyn. She creates performances that investigate how Black folks' cultural, familial, and personal histories are embodied in their bodies and influence their everyday and performative movement. Ogimdi aims to incite critical engagement with embodied Black history as a means to imagine Black futurity. That's right. <laughs> Rochelle is a Brooklyn-based movement and healing artist. She integrates movement, voice, and ritual through her work as a dancer, a doula, herbalist, and as an energy practitioner. Rochelle comes from a long line of teachers, conjurers, caregivers, and earth tenders from whom she channels guidance and wisdom. I now pass it on to you, Ogindi and Rochelle. Welcome. Thank you so much. My name is Rochelle Jamila Wilbin, and my pronouns are she and her. I am a light-skinned Black woman 
in Brooklyn, New York. Hi, my name is Ogemdi Uday. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I am a dark-skinned Black woman with poofy, 4 dark hair, wearing a Black top, and Rochelle and I are in front of a gold shelf and a white wall. Today, we also want to acknowledge the Lenape, Canarsie, and Rockaway peoples whose land we work and live on. We want to give honor to elders past, present, and emerging who are the traditional custodians of this land on which we continue to be fed by. This land was never ceded. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to walk through a short presentation and do a little bit of dancing. Yes. So I want to begin just by giving um, I'd like to begin by just giving us some context of why our project felt so important to us. Um, we are offering this in the, the climate of a Black birthing crisis. And this is just a content warning. Uh, I will be talking about some statistics around death and uh, life. In Brooklyn, New York, Black people are 12 times more likely to die due to birth-related complications as their white counterparts. And in those situations, 18% of those deaths happen one to six days postpartum. Another 21% happens in the first 42 days postpartum. So as doulas, and caregivers in our community, we know that postpartum is a crucial time for supporting birthing people and for helping them get the resources that they need. Can we head to the next slide? Great. Or the next slide is, it's one that says Afro Peach at the top. So I think we jumped for it a little bit. Yes, there we go. So Afro Peach, this is our mission. Afro Peach uniquely blends movement healing practices and birth work to provide holistic care for Black bleeding and birthing people with a focus on postpartum care. We aim to support Black bleeding and birthing people to feel empowered and sacred in their bodies and to decrease postpartum health disparities by fostering a supportive space for physical, mental, and emotional wellness. And let's go into the next slide. Which, yeah, no. It should so, say movement, nourishment, and education. There, there we go. We go. We're getting it, y'all. <laughs> So these are the three pillars that our traditional birth and womb work are rooted in. And we come from a lens of movement that all healing, all life involves movement. And so when we're supporting people and bringing forth life and, and healing and recovering from the rigorous process of bringing forth life, that movement is crucial and integral to that healing process. Nourishment is just essential. It's essential for postpartum. It's a time when we need so much love in the form of food as nourishment, medicine as nourishment, community as nourishment, resources as nourishment. So we focus a lot on that. And then finally, education is such a crucial aspect of making sure that postpartum people have what they need. It is our hope that Afro Peach will meet people before they're even postpartum and when they are postpartum so that they have the information, the resources, because there can be such an immense gap between the information people have when they are even pregnant to prepare them for what postpartum life will be like. And we're gonna head forth to the next slide where we'll talk about our year in a nutshell. Great. So this year has been a lot in a lot of ways, but it's been fun. And so we wanna kind of give a quick breakdown of what that has meant for us. The first being we took some time to curriculum build, to think about 
what we have between us as artists, educators, doulas, and what we want to bring to the table and ways to really translate the ways that we already work respectively as dance artists and doulas into the work that we want to share with folks. We then went into a focus group process, which included us gathering and gathering and inviting folks from the community, Black postpartum people in Brooklyn, who would be able to give us some feedback on what they needed from the work and what they were missing in their day to day support. And then one of the little experiments we had was Club Afro Peach, which was just a little virtual dance party for a time for people to come together and to, I don't know, really hit it in their apartments and to kind of have that sort of community and that stimulus of movement, even when we are um, behind our screens in our respective homes and enjoying that from there. So we had a huge realization during this project that we had to pivot our original vision to online because we wanted to meet people where they were at home during the COVID-19 pandemic. So another immense part of that was our on-demand classes that we created for our website. Next slide, please. So on our Afro Peach website, you'll find on-demand classes um, about postpartum nourishment that includes how to make a nourishing herbal infusion, how to make a bone broth, um, and then also movement as nourishment as well. A huge part of what we're trying to create is a sense of digital dueling. So meeting people, even if we can't come to every single person's home and offer them postpartum care in the ways we want, which involves putting our hands on them and rubbing their bodies and you know preparing them a fresh meal right to their table, uh, we're able to offer a lot of that nourishment in the form of these classes. Great. And now we are going to walk a little bit through our um, through our website. Um, bear with us as we're doing this funny little panning back and forth with my computer. Okay, so walking through our website, we have, as Rochelle was saying, we pivoted to digital doulaing, and we wanted to think about what collection of resources could we put together and how what is the most effective way to do this and so right now if you go to afropeach.com you will find a little bit more about us as a partnership and individuals next slide please you will also find movement classes and so and also keep in mind it is under construction so if you go right now some things are there some things will be there soon so keep checking back but we have some movement classes from postpartum yoga to creative movement to somatic classes next slide please we also have our wisdom keeper series which is when we get into that education element when we're talking about the pillars of this work and that is when we bring in different birth work experts to talk about all of the beautiful stuff they have to share next slide please we also have nourishment videos so videos that walk through different um, postpartum goodies that you can use for yourself one being bone and veggie broth next slide please and then another being herbal infusions that we also have a chest feeding salve up and so more will come in the future and these are just a few things that are already there now um, and let's go into the last slide Oh, yes, that's another one. Great. That's another thing you'll see. And let's go to the next slide, which will be the actual last slide. Okay, cute. We're back. Um, and actually, we can get rid of the slides for a second. Amazing. Now this is easier. We're going to do some moving for like three minutes. If y'all want to move with us, then please do. Because of copyright, we can't play music but we have a shaker and Rochelle's gonna do her best with the shaker, I trust us. Did you still wanna do some breath work first? Let's do a okay. quick breath work, yeah. So we're gonna begin just by grounding our bodies with some breath work. I'm gonna offer this, but if it doesn't resonate with you, breathe however feels good in your body. Like, you know yourself best. For those who wanna follow along, you can lower your gaze or if it feels good, close your eyes. 
And we're gonna do a four part breath. So taking a deep breath in to a count of four. When you get to the top of that breath, allow it to sustain for four counts. And then exhale for four counts. And then sustain that hold of the exhale at the bottom of your breath for four more counts. We'll try that again all together. Inhale for one, two, three, four. Sustain that inhale for one, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four and sustain that exhale, two, three, four. Okay, now that we're in our bodies, we're gonna get up and do some movement and I'm gonna grab my shaker. <laughs> if you feel up for it. <laughs> All right, so. We're just gonna try a few things. Do you wanna help? Hmm? Do you wanna help a second? Okay. Okay, I'm not gonna hold anymore for a second. So these movements, the first one being we're gonna take our right leg, put it behind our left foot, and we're just gonna reach down. Then we're gonna step back on that right leg and come back up. So I guess the electric slide folks got it too. So we just step down, we bring it back up, and then we bounce our shoulders and then we're gonna push down bring it up and then where do we go next and then we did step touch step touch and then spin and then spin close down and you can clap if oh, you like cute all right so <laughs> let's be yes five Six, seven, eight. We step, we bring it back, we shoulder and shoulder. We bounce, we bounce, we step together, step around, clap. Do you want to do it one more time? Let's do it one more time. It's fun to do. If you have, after this, go play Legos Jump. That's the <laughs> song that this was to be to and it's a really good song and this is not comparing this is not comparing as much what we're doing our best all right let's try it again five six five six seven eight step down step back shoulders shoulders bring it up bring it up step tap and turn <laughs> Thanks for bearing with us in that weird little silence. Um, that's all we got. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you so much, Rochelle and Ogimdi. This was amazing, amazing, life affirming and life giving. Um, I cannot believe this really. <laughs> I love the improvisational aspect of it all too. But above all, we really appreciate the fact that you are bringing a healing resource into our communities. And I know this is gonna have ripple effects far into the future. Congratulations to you both. And now we're going to turn to our last presentation of the evening, the Dream Seed Collective will take us through the development of their Oracle Tarot card deck and community partnerships that they've developed along with programming that make up this overall project. We're gonna to get to get a preview of the deck where our limited edition print offer stems from this year. The members of the Dream Seed Collective include Melania Graham, Malika Nia Imani, and Blaise Sparta. The Oracle Tarot card deck that they created offers guidance and affirmations to those who have limited access to these tools. The project was born out of the idea that generational healing is co-created within community. The collective offered the following thoughts, quote, 
We have practiced tarot during life's transitions and can attest to the healing power of intentions and affirmations. The magic of tarot lies in its ability to ebb and flow with the spirit. This deck celebrates the beauty, diversity, and resiliency of our community." End quote. Blaz Bartha is an independent visual artist, model, and professional tarot reader based in Brooklyn, New York. Hailing from Trinidad and Tobago, Sparta's art navigates the spaces between disparate worlds. They are inspired by the spiritual technology of their ancestors and have utilized tarot for the spiritual and emotional wellness of their clientele. For Sparta, tarot is a gateway to the facets of the self that needs the most love and the most understanding. Melania Graham is a Black, queer, interdisciplinary artist. They received the BFA with a concentration in painting from CUNY Hunter College and worked in several arts organizations across New York City before forming a creative production company entitled Taurus Moon Lab. Malika Niemani is a Black fluid femme artist and entrepreneur from the Bronx. Malika has a small business making wearable art, and they've worked on independent video and portraiture projects, and as an assistant videographer and editor on a live podcast. Please help me welcome the Dream Seed Collective, Blaise Sparta, Melania Graham, and Malika Nia Imani. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hello, everyone. It's so great to see all of you. Yes, thank you for being here with us tonight. Um, my name is Malika Nia Imani. I am a dark skinned femme wearing glasses and red braids with a cream colored sweater. Hi, my name is. Oh, sorry, go ahead. My pronouns are she and they. Hi everyone, my name is Blaze Sparta. I am a dark skinned um, femme presenting person with curly red hair and I am staying in Lenape Land, also known as Brooklyn. And I'm happy to see all of you. Oh yeah, my pronouns are Dave now. Forgot to mention that. Thanks guys. Hi everyone, my name is Melania Graham and I'm part of Dream Seed Collective. My pronouns are they, them. I'm a dark brown skin black femme with a pink afro and a printed head wrap and red silk top. Uh, I'm presenting from the unceded land uh, of Lenape, uh, which is also known as Brooklyn. And I'm so happy that you guys are engaging with our project tonight. Thank you, everybody. Um, so I'll jump right in and tell you about Dream Seed Collective. Um, we formed Dream Seed Collective with the belief that healing is found within community and found within art. Uh, we are creating the Dream Seed Oracle deck with a project release date of 2022. We are inspired by holistic wellness practices and Black, Indigenous, POC, queer ancestors. This deck will be a living symbol of our beautiful, blos of our beautiful blossoming in the midst of mounting violence. Can we get our uh, presentation slides? Thank you. Can we get the next slide? Yeah, this slide is good. And can we have Sparta on the screen? Okay, you can take it away, Sparta. Uh, you're on mute. <laughs> All right, so this is an open studio video. Can we play this, please?
Okay, yes. So this is our Open Studio video and you are highlighting how we can incorporate tarot into our spaces for healing and for intentional work. We were speaking with, um, we were speaking with our collective to give intentional work in a way that is accessible to the community as well as um, not um, intense, something that's palpable and open for everyone. Mm -hmm. During our open studio, we walk through the history of tarot. Um, oh, thank you. We walk through the history of tarot um, and its connection to the Black diaspora. And we also walk through um, a communal altar making where we, at, where we had some of our Black queer ancestors on our altar, some things that people might usually put on their altars like candles, um, seashells, a candle, um, maybe something from the earth, things that represent uh, our elements and our connection to our greater spirits. Thank you. Can we move to the next slide? Yes, C table talks. Thank you. Yes, so our C table talks um, was our programming throughout the year, and it's a play on words of Jada Pinkett's Red Table Talks, which is basically um, online presentations and talks with people who were interested in different indigenous and um, African practices, uh, African spiritual practices. This flyer was for our Tarot and the Black Experiences with Jesse Jumanji. Um, and and Sparta. Sparta, do you want to give a little bit of info about this C table talk that you did with our guests? Yes. So one of the most important things we covered with Jesse Jumanji and Catherine X, um, sorry, Courtney Alexander is um the importance of seeing blackness as something that is highlighted and empowered rather than something that's in the background. A lot of decks or a lot of like tarot history has been about um Excuse me. A lot of tarot history has been about appropriation, and the, along with Jesse Jumanji and Courtney Alexander, their decks exemplify Black creativity, Black power, and Black, black fluidity in their work. It was also important to us during this talk to um, to point out that tarot doesn't have to be a gendered experience. A lot of the decks are extremely gendered. Um, including a lot of the cards and a lot of people who are interested in tarot are black gender non-conforming and trans people so a lot of times um our community will feel left out from this experience so that's why it was also very important to us to have this talk well uh, one of my favorite parts of this was when jesse and courtney um, shared their process in making the decks. Um, they shared, you know, how it was a transformative and spiritual experience. They both came from um, different uh, sides of the table uh, where Jesse used a lot of collage um, and digital research to create their deck. And Courtney Alexander made paintings for each card. Um, so that was really cool. Uh, and the next slide uh, should be a video an excerpt of the C table talk. I'm not sure if we'll be able to play. No, okay. Okay, uh, the next slide, next slide then. <laughs> So this next seed table talk uh, was hosted by Malika and it was called Adornment. Um, the body as an altar, and the guests were Sol Diaz of Soelia NYC and V uh, of Black Queer Magic. Um, Malika, do you want to share uh, some of the inspiration behind this talk? Yes, absolutely. So uh, as someone who is a jeweler and a metalsmith um, and also queer and also Black, uh, a lot of times, um, we are in this field um, 
there's not a lot of representation. So hosting a talk with other black and POC queer people um, that are also metalsmiths and also extremely spiritual was one of my inspirations for this talk. Um, we spoke about the healing properties of different crystals and different metals. And we spoke about how um, jewelry can be an inspiration uh, and also uh, a way to um, represent yourself in the world. I have one thing to add. One of my favorite parts of that talk was um, speaking on how we function our bodies as a holy and a sacred space and carrying that energy into like the work that we do. So that was something that I enjoyed a lot. Yes, V and Soul were extremely inspiring when they were talking about um, the transference of energy through jewelry and through metal um and always um creating with love and inspiration and they were extremely inspiring yes i love that there was a caribbean connection in the whole room uh that evening uh since sol is from honduras and v is from jamaica so it was really great to talk about um the inspiration uh behind adornment and how we connected to our caribbean ancestors specifically uh, can we have the next slide, please? <laughs> um, okay, then next slide. I'm not sure. Okay. Sorry. Oh, I wonder if it'll work now. Okay, we're gonna pause here. Okay, so the the, the next the table talk was called Tarot and Hoodoo for Black and Trans Healing. And Little. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so this one uh, was called Hulu and Tarot for Black Trans Healing, and we connected on the different types of divination um, for Black healing. And Malika, do you want to share some um, feedback from this talk? Yes, thank you. Um, this talk was with um, two herbalists and two and another person who was deeply involved in hoodoo and was from the South, um, also both black and queer. And we had, I think about 30 guests who were extremely interested in what they had to say and the conversation that we were um, facilitating um, I'm sorry. Um, so Saray um, grew up in the South and he was actually raised Christian, which was something that we all found interesting, but he's also deeply involved in hoodoo practices. Um, and he was explaining the connection between Christianity and black hoodoo practices and how deeply they were intertwined. Um, and also how tarot, the practice of tarot was intertwined with the hoodoo, pra with um, black hoodoo practices. Um, and I thought that the way that he kind of broke down all of the, all of the systems was very interesting. Can we play the- I think the video can work now. Thanks for your patience.
Exactly. Awesome. Yeah, that was one of my favorite sea table talks uh, because I got to learn a lot about hoodoo um, and how tarot can be used uh, as a divination practice, specifically for Black, queer, and trans people. Um, and hearing their stories about how their lives changed um, as they practice hoodoo was really special to me and um, something that I feel like I would love to look forward to in the future. Um, Sparta, did you have any feedback on the talk? I know you were super involved, uh, you know, with the commentary and talking about um, their spiritual growth. Yes. One thing that really stuck out to me was um, Saray's, um, Saray's um, point that Kudu is just an alternate telling of Christianity and an alternate way to view Genesis. And the way we've seen the Bible beforehand has always been a tool of oppression. And to see that who does transform this thing that frees us, that opens us, that heals us, was remarkable. And to know that we created that as a community was very like impactful to me. Yeah, felt like we were creating like a whole family there, um, especially since they were talking about like, you know, how their community, their friendship circle and even romantic circles were changing, you know, as they were embarking on their journey. Uh, can we get the next slide, please? So this talk uh, was hosted by Blaze, myself, and uh, Jamisa Hawthorne of Jamha Herbals. And they are a practitioner of herbalism. And we just talked about how herbalism and tarot are connected because there are actually a lot of tarot cards that feature herbalism. Um, so the next slide is a video um, of some excerpts, but uh, Blaze, do you wanna say anything beforehand? I would say having the, the addition of You went on mute, Sparta. <laughs> Can everyone hear me now? Okay. See, being within the intersection of tarot and herbalism made me realize that like tarot is very much a is a tool, but is very much like something that can branch out and help us in other ways in our spirituality. Divination is just a, like a small, minute part of what your spiritual journey can be, but it informs so much of what you can do. So a lot of um, what I remember about that Seek Table Talk was about acknowledging the knowledge that you have, acknowledging what you have to learn more of through tarot and herbalism. 
Yes. Um, and I guess as we get the video prepped, I also remember towards the end of the conversation um, beyond like uh, kitchen herbs like cinnamon and like thyme and things like that, where we can begin herbalism. We also spoke about um, like using shrooms and using ayahuasca and having like ritual um, and connecting to our ancestors in that way. So we can play the video now. Once I found the language of hoodoo, I was like, oh, like so Mugwort is a really beautiful dream herb, um, really beautiful for like inspiration and muse work, um, connecting to your intuition, um, strengthening your There's no sound divinatory the skills. So I, the first herbs that I uh, learned about were nettle and oat straw. So like, what were the, the basics that you learned? I think oat straw and nettles definitely were in, in the beginning because they're such nutritive plants. They're super safe for the most part. Like it's, it's always great to begin um, working with herbs that you feel like you can just play with and you can experiment with. It's and like don't. kitchen witching was kind of like my, like the, all the first herbs and where I began like playing with, with plants. Um, I was yeah. just about to say that as a note, mm -hmm. like my first exposure to herbalism was kitchen witchery and like mm -hmm. a lot of, um, have you guys ever heard of an intention jar where you bless your herbs and put your intention in and it's the spell jar? Mm -hmm. I, I did a lot of those and um, most I of the that. yeah mm -hmm. most of the language stayed the same even when you use it for homeopathic like reasons I know lavender is calming and that's still the same for for spell work too uh, I I similarly like to play with herbs um on my altar and use them with an intention like oat straw for abundance if I'm making myself a jar of oat straw tea um, for abundance and just for that reassurance and connection piece, I'll, I'll make sure to pour them some too. Or if I need um, some speed behind some action, I'll add some cayenne powder or some cinnamon to sort of spice things up and heat things up. One more comment. I also really enjoyed um looking at the different is a really beautiful dream or I also really enjoyed that we got into what the meaning of each herb was so people can have that for their own knowledge yeah I feel like we had so much engagement like it was truly um one of the most intergenerational um C table talks that we did there were uh, I think there was an elder who tuned in from like the mountains of Mexico to like talk about their experience with um, magic shrooms. Um, there was a young femme who talked about uh, their experience with like, um, or rather trans transition from like uh, kitchen or herbalism to like community herbalism, sharing sharing salves and teas and things like that. Um, and Malika uh, is also uh, an herbalist uh, for you know for local communities. So that was really great to learn about. Yeah, it was an amazing workshop, um, and I really loved how we talked about um, how tarot and herbalism in interconnected because a lot of these um, spiritual practices are for the community, especially herbalism, you know, like it's for the earth, liter from the earth, literally. So it's meant to be shared and it's meant to be, you know, given freely. Thank you. We can go to the next slide. Awesome. So another part of our project this year was a community partnership with the Griot Circle. And the Griot Circle is an all queer group of black and brown elders um, living abundantly and in freedom. That is, I believe their mission statement, which is awesome. We can go to the next slide, which is when, oh, it has their mission statement there. All LGBTQ elders of color living a just and abundant life. So this was one of our first meetings with them. Um, and it was amazing. Uh, we, they called it a coffee talk. They have it, I believe, once every month. 
and meeting these elders was like really fulfilling. Um, a lot of them are Caribbean. So it was like, you know, a lot of jokes passed back and forth. We got to learn a lot about their young, um, their young queer lives and like what they went through coming out, their experiences with their families, things like that. Yes, it was a lot of trading stories, um, a lot of them telling stories, um, giving advice. Um, it was a beautiful time with them and a lot of um, trading knowledge too. You know, a lot of the people part, who are part of your circle had never um, been interested in tarot or um, been exposed to tarot. So it was a great time um, introducing them to that too. We can go to the next slide. Yes, this is our flyer for a tarot talk, the first tarot workshop that we did with Grio Circle, um, where we talked again um, with them about the connection to black and with black and brown people to tarot, um, the history of tarot, and how we can use divination and tarot in our everyday lives. Um, we can go to the next slide. Yeah. Sparta, do you want to tell us what's going on here? So here we are giving readings to our elders. And at first, I will say they were a bit hesitant. There is a lot of stigma with tarot that they might tell a few that they wouldn't want to know. But over time, after like speaking to us and um, having individualized readings, they were open to the wisdom that tarot has to offer and the gentleness that it actually has. It felt really good to provide an open space of acknowledgement and healing for them because I don't want to share what exactly happened, but one of the members was going through a rough patch and for them to be in a space of vulnerability with us was so healing. And it felt like the most important thing about the intergenerational work that we're doing here. I think what's really significant about this is that a lot of them um, I guess displayed some hesitancy and maybe a little bit of some fear because of the the widespread understanding that tarot can like tell your future. But I think what we made um, apparent through through like a teaching, a slideshow that Sparta gave, and also in the experience of the readings and looking through the tarot cards was really that tarot is about empowerment and sharpening your intuition rather than telling or like predicting a solid future. Um, it's really just to like really take your future in your own hands um, and reflect on it each day and really see like how you're building your ideal life. So the next slide is some images from our dream shoots which was, um, I, I feel like the whole project is awesome, uh, but the dream shoots were really where we got to engage with community one-on-one -on -one and see how they really connected and embodied each card. Uh, and so far, I believe we have about 15 uh, cards. So we'll be editing that maybe a little bit more, uh, maybe a little bit more models actually, but we can go to the next slide and we'll just be showing you some images. Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. So we decided to show uh, these cards in order of, a of the tarot deck. So the first card is the Hermit, and this is our friend Rumi and their dog Baba. Uh, the Hermit card, yeah, the Hermit card is uh, the start of the journey uh, in the tarot deck. Um, Sparta, do you want to explain, you know, the whole, there's a storytelling aspect to tarot cards. So the the emerging one is also called the fool. So we decided to use the emerging one as like a more um, uplifting title for the card. Uh, you can go ahead, Sparta. So one thing we need to recognize when we like um, receive the fool card is that 
we're given the abundant opportunity to be what we desire and start our communities with happiness and joy. The fool is engaged with like all the opportunity within themselves and is like fueled by the power within them. It also comes with a bit of naivete because this is a very youthful card, but nonetheless, because they're so willing to move forward and they're so willing to embark on their journey, they're blessed with so much experience. So it's a very good card to have when you first see it. Can I have the next slide? Okay, the magician. So the magician is all about alchemy and being a self-created person. But it's also about trickery and how you can be around sleight of hand. The magician is about using all your ample resources and all the things that you're capable of doing to make magic. So if you've ever been seen your mom or someone who is very close to you make something out of nothing, this is very much the card for it. Can I have the next slide? So I think we're running out of time here. Can we just show the next slides? This is the High Priestess, modeled by yours truly. This is the Emperor. This is the Hierophant. These are the Lovers. This is Strength. The Hermit, the Wheel of Fortune, Justice, Suspension, also known as the Hanged Man, but we would prefer to use Suspension here, Death, one is Temperance, this is the Moon, this is the sun, also seen as our print that we're doing for the Gathering Create this year. Next slide, please. This is judgment. And finally, but not least, we have the universe. Right. So these are all major arcana cards or the trump cards of the deck. They are the chapters in your story, and think of the minor arcana as the paragraphs in those chapters. All right, thank you guys for watching our presentation, and we hope that you uh, keep in touch and follow the project. Our Instagram is dreamseed underscore collective, and the deck will be released next year in 2022. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dream Seed Collective, for closing us out with the sacred project of Afro-queer healing practices and giving us an intergenerational look at our shared spirituality. It's great to get more context around projects. And of course, um, get a little bit of context around limited edition print that the Laundromat Project is offering this year. Congratulations to you all. Thank you, thank you um, so much, um, Naomi. That was uh, wonderful to hear from you. Uh, thank you for hosting. Thank you to all of our incredible um, artists. Um, could not be more moved and just honored that we got to be part of your work and to help bring all of that uh, goodness and beauty and joy and healing into the world. Um, thank you to everyone for spending time with us. We just have a little bit more. So as you can see, we are building a community of artists as leaders who create change in and with their communities. Um, and tonight we have a special tribute that we just wanna make before moving on to our final uh, thank yous and a special treat at the very end. But we could not finish this evening without acknowledging our recently uh, former colleague and forever LP member, Atwe Ramos Fermin. He has been instrumental in shaping and defining our Create Change program, our artist development program since joining the staff in 2016. 
He's also a former, he's also an alum of Create Change. So he's been family for a lot longer than that. He recently left to start his next professional chapter and we will miss him dearly. Nonetheless, we look forward to continuing to grow the seeds which he helped to plant, such as this year's cohort of Create Change artists and residents. So thank you, Atwe. And I invite everyone uh, to take a moment to raise a glass uh, to Atwe. Um, whatever you have is good. Um, and thank you, as we always say, once LP fam, always LP fam. So few quick remarks and then a special uh, little treat at the end. Uh, thank you again to our incredible everyone who's been here today. Want to say a quick thank you to our funders who you can see all listed in our credits. Um, couldn't do this without them. Thank you to the LP team for all the ways you have supported and nurtured this year's Create Change cohort. Thank you, Lady Sasha, Tiara, Ciavel, Emma, Julia, and Aisha. Also to the folks who um, also helped to bring tonight together, Albert, Debbie, and Sally, thank you for your additional program support. It takes a village indeed. Thank you and congratulations, Melania, Malika, Blaise Sparta, Rochelle, Ogemdi, and Gabrielle for sharing your creativity, your learnings, your process, and all your joy with us tonight. Thank you for modeling the many ways that creativity can foster significant, meaningful, and positive change in our communities. You are showing us the way and making new paths. Thank you for you, all of you, on the various platforms. Um, thank you for joining us tonight as our friends and our supporters. I hope um, you'll take some of what you've heard today back to your own communities and it will inspire the way that you work collectively towards building a more just and artful future. We'll be sharing the recording and transcript afterwards. So whatever you missed, you can see or see again. Um, and we invite you to stay up to date with the LP on our various platforms, which will be in the chat in just a second. To close, let's hear from our LP friend, colleague, and someone whose practice we all deeply admire, their cultural organizer and social justice activist, Sonia Gwenyansaka, who will be sharing a few words of inspiration for our graduates, our new alum, our forever fam, uh, 2021 Create Changers. So we just have, it's just a minute or so, a minute and a half. Other than that, good night. Thank you, everyone. This has been incredible. Sonia. Hi, everyone. My name is Sonia Kinyasaka. I'm joining you from Tungva Land, Los Angeles. I am an artist, poet, cultural organizer, and social justice activist. I believe in the power of art and culture, but most importantly, I believe in the power of artists and cultural workers who are shaping our advocacy and policy and who are creating better worlds possible and who are invoking healing, joy, and care into our communities. And they're doing all of this through the power of movement, through immersive theatrical experiences and self-expressions through symbolisms and iconography. This is why so much of my work is in advocating for artists and collectives like the LPs, Create Change, Artists in Residence. Because like many of us, they are building a society where they see themselves represented, where their communities and values are centered and we are all collectively are being transformed. I hope this magical evening has moved you and I hope that you are eager to learn more. I am inspired by their work and I hope you are too. Thank you so much.